Most of us got into event production because we love the craft. We love making things sound good to be in that moment where the band's taking the stage and the crowd is screaming. Or maybe we love the problem solving of getting the perfect system up in the air and every single seat having amazing experience. It's a blast. I, I love it. I don't see myself leaving this industry. Uh, there's going to be new advancements as live and hybrid events come together, how people experience it remotely. It's just a really cool time. But most of us are excited about that. But when it comes to the business side of stuff, we just kind of go, that's just the stuff I kind of have to do that I've haphazardly put together that uh, is just there to serve the other thing. And you're right, we, we, we want to focus on the craft, but I feel like most of us have neglected setting up a sustainable, a fluid and predictable system for getting those other things done. So in my mind, there are six core business buckets that you need to be driving at all times. This doesn't take all of your mental bandwidth or energy. It takes a good bit to get them started and get them fluid. And that's what we're going to be exposing here today. But once it's up and running, uh, you're not going to have to be spending all this time and energy doing it. But putting your head in the sand like an ostrich isn't the way to do it either. So I want to share with you today some of the tools that I use, the processes and the ways I think about each of these six buckets and how you can fit them together into a system and make it your own. Again, the tools that I use don't have to be your tools. That's just the way I get it done. I'm most interested in you learning about the underlying core principles and put them into practice and make it sure it's a sustainable system for you and where you're at in your own life and business. So we're going to be stepping through each of these six principles. Then we'll be sharing, I'll be sharing some further resources and books. And then hopefully next week, I'm going to be putting together a minimalist MVP setup right in front of you to put all these concepts together. In my mind, if I were, if someone had coffee with me, it was like, Hey, I'm a freelancer. I'm getting gigs. This is my full-time thing, but all this business and backend stuff is, is really haphazard. So we're going to make it really affordable and really fluid and put it together next Next week. But if we don't understand these core concepts, so it's what we're covered today, that's all for not. All right, so let's jump into our six core business systems. Here are the six core business systems that should be at the heart and foundation of your daily operations. We have specific roles and responsibilities that are required of us, no matter we're a freelancer, a solopreneur, a small business owner, a church tech director, wherever. All of these things need to get done. I think dividing them up into these traditional categories and thinking about them and managing this way will help you gain clarity, work faster, uh, and overall just be more satisfied with, with your living. So first up is values and vision. So the question you're asking yourself is, why am I doing this work and where am I going? So me working in this industry, the live event industry, we all know if you're not doing a gig in town, you're traveling, you have you have longer days, it's it's seasonal, it's volatile, but since I'm becoming more and more in demand, like I'm being able to say no to some types of work and I'm, I'm privileged to be in that spot, but I've always known that I've wanted to diversify that because I don't just want to tour or I don't just want to go to a gig and be done. I want to build an asset that's bigger than just me being somewhere. Hence why I have this YouTube channel. Hence why I'm developing courses, why I'm getting into system design. All these other things have sprung from that. But I didn't make that move until I first solidified my values. So with my family, my wife and I have worked together. And this is our family values in one page, our marriage, our home, how we rest, how we carry out relationships, what work looks like, what our physical health looks like. Uh, so these are overarching categories, as well as specific things that we do. And that's important to us. So all that being said, I think it's important for you for, before you do any of the next five, how can you personally define your values and vision for where you want to go? And then that will roll up into how can you plan for that? So I have a planning tab that makes sure I, that keeps these values and visions uh, in front of me. So I have priorities, what things are looking like this quarter. I can look ahead at the different projects. I can set goals. Again, the, the goal isn't to show you this fancy dashboard of mine and say, like, look at this cool thing that I built. It's more about how can you use the tools that you're comfortable with or maybe new ones that you want to explore to make sure these are in front of you as well. So how can you be upgrading a new skill set? How can you be fostering connections? How can you ground yourself in these values of not only where you want to go personally, but how is your business making that forward? So I would say always start here with your values and vision and the rest will flow out from that.
Next up is operations. The question this is answering is how is work being done? This is the hub of the system and the other systems are the spoke. Uh, if your vision and values guide how where the wheel is turning, I'm gonna keep rolling with this analogy, no pun intended, operations is at the center and everything rotates around it. it, it if you don't decide how work gets done, that's gonna be haphazard, there's no processes. I'm not saying you should chain yourself and be really rigid, but a flexible yet robust robust framework for how things are getting done is really important. So what that looks like for me is number one, having this entire system that I've put together. But here's an example of my project hub. All at once, I can see what is to do, uh, what I'm doing, what are some ongoing projects, what have I completed? Anyway, it's all right here in one spot. So I can see at any given point, I'm working on a new course, uh, the system design projects I'm working on, I'm training my content manager, I've got some live shows coming up so I can see in one spot. So being able to see at a high level, then go down to any specific course I have. So I've got this system design project, I can go in here, see where the Google Drive is, Dropbox, I can see where we're at with the project, the client name, the tasks, the notes. Again, it's not just like, look at this fancy shiny object. It's I've intentionally put all these pieces in place so I'm not confused and swimming around and trying to pull out 17 junk drawers and figure out where things are. I'm saying this is the specific process and workflow of what it looks like for me to get things done. Now that I have a part-time content manager, how do I work with her? So that's something that's been on my brain a lot. It's like, how can I make sure she knows what's going on? So I've built out her a dashboard and asked her to work on projects and we're communicating here in this app instead of text messages, right? Um, and so in establishing that is really important. So our procedures documented and clear what needs to be done the same every time. Can you standardize that and save time and improve clarity for you and with your team? It's basically how can you free up your brain to focus on the fun and creative stuff and learning and have the stuff that is the same. It is a creative act to make these systems, but I think it's 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 good to be able to have things that are predictable that can be predictable because if we've worked in the event industry long enough, we know there's a lot that's unpredictable. So that is operations, that is traditionally the COO hat, and that is the second core business system that needs to be developed for you. The third business system is finance. This is traditionally the CFO of the company. And the question it's answering is how do we allocate non-human resources and measure our business's performance? So in the day-to-day, -day, this is working in something like QuickBooks, this is categorizing transactions, bookkeeping, sending invoices, doing tax reporting. So I use an app called Gusto for that that handles all of that for me. It's really great. It runs payroll as well as pays into both my state and federal federal government here in the US. We have to do quarterly payments on top of that and, a, and a, or quarterly estimated payments on top of that. If you're a business owner, I'm personally an LLC filing as an S Corp. And we, I can do a video on that later discussing why I've chosen that route. But finance, um, I, I like QuickBooks. I've used Wave, I've used FreshBooks, but I think it's worth it to get QuickBooks here in my opinion, having used those different apps. But keeping track of the health of your business, seeing what money is coming in and what's going out is really important. And how you can do that, apart from looking in QuickBooks, is I have a template here in Notion, a business metrics dashboard. So right here, I've got finance metrics database. And here's an example here that I've shown in a previous video, being able to look at the month and year, your gross revenue, your cost of goods sold. So these are expenses occurred on a particular gig, your profit, operating expenses, and so on. So you're, I'm going to have a link below to this template that you can download. But it's basically saying, how are we doing? How can I look at a specific month or quarter or year and know like, am I profitable? Because that's important. I mean, you, you have to stay in the game long enough to, to make things happen. I also think it's a good idea to have an emergency fund because how things are so volatile across the industry. Uh, I think a good three to six months of expenses is, is a really good starting point. But finance is something you're going to be able to need to keep your finger on the pulse of to know, can I make an investment in a new Pelican if I need it? Or if a piece of gear broke, uh, can I do that? Can I give myself a raise next year? Do, can you look backwards at the data and figure this out? So I think it's a really important hat to wear. And it's number three in our list. Number four is sales and marketing. This is also known as business development. And this is the CMO. 
And the question it's answering is how do I develop new business and grow my brand? So how can I get new clients and make sure how people perceive me as a professional um, is good and uh, people like working with me or your company or coming to your church or whatever. So a really important thing to have is a portfolio. So what that looks like on my website here is this is the, the back end of my website. We'll come back to this page. But on my website, I have a portfolio page. So if someone wants to see what I've done, that's an easy way to see it. They can sort it by different types of projects I've been a part of, live audio, they can see who I mix for, these other events, whatever. Just, just a sampling here. If people wanna learn more, they can always reach out. I think it's also a good idea to be able to show your resume. I have that here in Notion. And it's also in a follow-up email if someone fills out my work with me form and includes my resume. So all those resources are there right then. So points them to my website, my YouTube channel, uh, my course, uh, the places I've been interviewed or appeared on. It shows some of my design projects and it links right here, the typical deliverable people can get, an overview of past projects, the shows I've been on, skills and certifications, education, references, contact info, all that good stuff is here on one page in my resume. So do you have that available and ready and updated for folks? Another function of sales and marketing is lead intake. So when people are wanting to work with you, what does that look like? So for me, I specifically built out a work with me page that so navigated to on my website, it looks like this. And just like, hey, if you want to hire me, I do these three things, ready to move forward, fill out the form below, and people can get started. It's a type form that's embedded right here. Again, the tool you use, up to you. I like this one. And just ask them four questions, their name, organization, email, and tell me more about the project. It gives me their email. I can then follow up with them. And that actually puts it in a really cool leads database right here. Um, and this is a template you can also download. So this isn't the actual database you're seeing, but it shows the client name, the organization, email, when you lot last contacted them, because sometimes you have to keep up with emails back and forth. And it's good to know like, oh shoot, it's been a week since I've talked to them. Correspondence notes. So I can say, okay, we're waiting on the boss's approval of the quote. So this is a lead that hasn't closed yet. I can change it from pending to closed to lost. And I can put in project info right here. So this is a handy place to keep track of clients. If you're just simply going out and mixing shows, it doesn't, this doesn't need to be any more complicated than this, uh, but maybe you're handling some installs or maybe you're editing podcasts while you have downtime. This is still really good to have this type of CRM or customer relationship manager. Uh, it's a really slim view. Again, that's all here within Notion. I like this. So it's, it's also really good to have an outbound digital presence. So what are you thinking about that and how I manage that? is in this project manager view for all my YouTube videos. So that's how I've chosen to grow my brand is to publish YouTube videos regularly about what I'm learning, what I'm sharing, system design specifically, but I'm gonna be branching up more in the future. Like you're seeing here, some of the more the business side of stuff. So I manage that here actively within Notion and I earn trust with people. I can't tell you how many gigs I've gotten just from someone watching a YouTube video saying like, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about. They reach out to me through the website, I close it. It's a, been a huge part of revenue over the past couple of years. So whatever that looks like for you, is that publishing regularly uh, on a blog? Is it keeping up with your Instagram? Is it starting a YouTube channel yourself? That I think that's really important to keep track of and move as you want to not just only rely on word of mouth to get you more gigs. Moving on to core business system number five, and that's research and development. And that's answering the question, how do I invest in myself and foster innovation? The world is changing quickly. We're seeing AI come up, all this different stuff. The, we need to keep up, not in this like, oh, we're all gonna get left behind mentality. But if we're not growing, we're not keeping up with the industry trends and where things are going, we're not gonna be relevant. So we need to upskill ourselves. And so how are you intentionally choosing to do that? So if you're in live audio, What's changing right now? It's like, okay, there's all this spatial audio stuff. That's There's live events that are trying to get, you know, get Soundscape, or Lisa or Space Map Go, that kind of stuff. It's not super common, but could you maybe start looking into that? Like, how is that all going to work? Or maybe you're, for me, I was, you know, a, a decent A1. I felt great about mixing, but I was really guessing when I was throwing up speakers a, a while back. So I thought, okay, can I really invest and in, in know exactly where I need to put speakers where? 
better and know how to measure them, how to tune them, all that. So that's why I decided to dive into system design. I just knew that was a hole in my own learning. Maybe you need to get different. Uh, you're getting called for A2 gigs, but you don't feel really confident. Well, that means invest more in RF. Can you learn more comm systems? Can you find local production companies, go knock on their door and like, hey, I know you have a Riedel system or a FreeSpeak system. I don't know it. Can I spend a couple of days in your shop tinkering around? And they're going to have zero problem with that. At least that's been my experience, right? So what that looks like for me is things I'm learning, I have a project around it. So here I'm learning Python right now because I want to learn how to do some scripting, automate a few things, then also use my Python learning to actually learn a little bit more about digital signal processing and understand that a bit deeper. So I've been going through this course called Automate the Boring Stuff. So it's a, it's a, it's free. And these are my course notes. So this is Python basics and I have that all here. And I've been taking mostly my own notes. Some of it is straight from that website, putting in the code blocks, and it's all laid out right here. It has a nice table of contents at the top. I can also look at the table of contents quickly at, of the book itself. So he, it's free to read here on the website or you can get the physical copy. I'm just going through the website right now, but it's a, been a great resource. It's been a lot of fun to learn. I'm on chapter two right now. I'm getting to the end of flow control. It's a long chapter. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm learning right now. And then to show you another example pertinent exactly to what uh, I talk about all the time is measurement. So I took my smart operator fund fundamentals online course, which they're, they're making a V9 version right now as of the recording of this video. And this is all the notes from that course. So I've put them all in here. Here's the YouTube video that's online, which you can watch for free right now, starting with the FFT analyzers. I took some screenshots of the slides, put them in here. So they're all collated in this place. So I'm intentionally curating and fostering what I'm learning, keeping this here easy to access. So that's R&D for what I'm learning. So maybe for you watching this, like, okay, I need to do some R&D about how to develop my business. So uh, that I'm going to give you some resources at the end, some great books and some next steps for you. But R&D is something that needs to be always happening in the background so you can grow yourself and grow your business. The last business system we'll cover is HR and management. This usually isn't something that's huge if you're a solopreneur, but still needs to be taken care of and deserves its own bucket. I mentioned earlier, I use an app called Gusto to help with this. So all the payroll is run here. Since I'm an S Corp, I get paid a regular salary and need to pay taxes like I'm an employee. So I'm both the owner of the business and the employee. So I'm paying business taxes, corporate taxes, and personal taxes here. Again, this is just US tax code stuff. And this runs automatically in the background, does all the tax filing for me for the business and has the W-2s. And that's worth 45 bucks a month for me. And so if you have other people that work for you at a production company, you could have this and scale up a little bit more. You can have benefits through this. You can do time off. You can have uh, charitable giving come through here. You can give out bonuses. Uh, when I was on staff at a production company, they used this. And this is why I'm familiar with it. I really liked it. So I kept it and use it with my own business. So as I grow and maybe hire some more people, I plan on migrating and using this. So all that being said, just take care of your people, <laughs> have things paid on time, have it regular, know your benefits. And even if you are just a freelancer, where like nobody cares if you get paid or not, having a regular payout schedule, either monthly or every other week or whatever you decide and keeping it regular is really good as you start to scale. So you're not just looking at your bank account, like I got six grand in there right now. Uh, I guess I could pull two grand out. Having a regular schedule will help mitigate that and, and not have um, when the bank account looks a little bit lower, you're not going to panic because you can see cash flow over time. And you're not just going to greedily pull stuff out when you see that there's a lot of resources in there. Now that we've covered the six business systems, let me tease a little bit a minimalist setup we're going to cover in the near future, hopefully next week. And I'll have a link below to it here. But I think you can make a MVP or minimum viable product setup of all this together just with a handful of apps. Again, the tools are going to change over time. I'm more concerned about the underlying principles that you have these, but I think it's helpful for you to build an underlying business infrastructure. So again, I'm, I'm a big Notion fan, which you could try for free at the link below. My affiliate link helps support me in the channel. I think it's helpful to have QuickBooks and accounting software. I think it's great to have a lead intake. So a type form, or you can have something within Notion called Chili Pepper. I think having a minimal website with something called Linktree that could just have links to pertinent stuff and push people around or whatever. It looks clean. It just has simple buttons. I think it's great. So anyway, we're going to talk about piecing that some of that together in a minimalist setup if you're just wanting to get started. So here's some further reading and some next steps for you. 
The first book I would check out is Business Made Simple by Donald Miller. It covers all of these concepts in a really digestible read one chapter a day type of format. So it's 60 days to leadership, mass, uh, 60 days to master leadership, sales, marketing, execution, management, personal productivity, and more. I really like his writing style. It's very clear, very direct. So if you just want an entire like start to finish kind of jump start to all this, uh, I really highly recommend this one. If you want a deep dive in like, okay, I've got some of these systems that already spun up, but I'm having trouble coordinating work with my team or with myself, I would check out A World Without Email. I hate book jacket covers. This one's from Cal Newport. I've read a lot of his other books, Deep Work, So Good They Can't Ignore You, Digital Minimalism. But he's more answering the question of most companies whether they could be publicly traded, a production company, a church staff, whatever, they really usually don't have really good communication workflows. They're not talking a lot, again, how, how we worked on the business so we can work together. They're more just kind of wheeling and just sending texts and emails and the, the, the fire that's blazing hot is what they're working on. So the, he really urges you to slow down, develop systems that give you new capabilities, solve pain points and make work smooth and efficient. And again, it's not just like getting a Zapier account and automating everything is the answer. It's not about having all these cool, neat tricks. It's about uh, alleviating the underlying pain points of things getting missed, plates drops, communication not being clear. So I highly recommend this book as well as all of his other books. The last one here is Systemology. This is by David Jennings. So if you want to be the person who's gonna wear the hat of like, okay, I need to pull out all the existing best practices and make them into SOPs or standard operating procedures. He really gives you the, the, the complete playbook on how to do that. So if you just need to distill everything that you're already doing that's more implicit than explicit, I highly recommend this book. And again, I'll have links to all of these below. Okay, wrapping this theme up, I would love for you to let me know below in the comments what's the one business system that you're gonna focus on and make better over the next few weeks. So the six we have here are our values and vision. Have you dis I would start here if you <laughs> make sure you have that clear and then work through one of these five. So operations, are you gonna make work clear and talk about how are we getting work done? Are you gonna work on finances? Have you just been winging it and not really having a good picture of your cash flow? Fourth, are you gonna work on marketing? How are you actively putting out both your physical self and your digital self out in the world to best represent the work you're wanting to get and what you're doing? Number five, innovation. Have you been slacking on investing in yourself and developing new skills? How can you make sure that's happening in the background all the time? And six, people. So how have you managed the HR aspects of both either the, the company you're running or just yourself? Are you getting paid regularly? Are you taking care of time off? Or are you just grinding yourself into the ground? Anyway, my name is Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and talking about this nerdy business stuff. Again, let me know in the comments below what's the one business system, what you're going to be working on and why. And I'll catch you next time, hopefully with a minimalist setup you can start implementing very soon.